Welcome back. We're still working on the prop shaft assembly. Joe is finishing up boring out the Dalrin liner for us. But before we finish that, we figured we would get back to a little bit of planking so that we can be ready to put that on once the Dalrin liner is done and we can put the whole prop shaft assembly together. But before we get to that, we wanted to let you know that we took uh, heed of all the comments about the merchandise and we have got some blue t-shirts that are made and ready to go. They will be on the website today. So if you're looking for one of those, that's where to find it. Uh, thank you all for the support. Now let's get on to the video. It's time to pick out some of the cedar boards that we're gonna put on as planks. Um, so behind me is the cedar rack that we built a little while ago. So not all woods are happy being stored this way, but cedar is one of the woods that really takes that very well. And it sheds the water and we can sort through them real easily. It's gonna be much easier than dealing with them in a pile like we've been doing with the oak. So the next steps are gonna be to pick out the very best boards uh, that we have in this uh, group here. And those are gonna end up being the top side planks. Um, once we have those picked out, we can have them set aside so we don't use them for anything below the waterline. And then we can start choosing some of the nicer boards from the rest of the pile there to continue with the planking going up. Um, so we're going to take the morning now and pick out all those good topside planks and then choose the next planks that will go onto the boat and we'll start scarfing those up. Let's take this one as a plank for now. And then you just walk it down and I'll flip the bottom so it doesn't flip up on you. Ross was back to help us out for another week. He was here previously back when we were putting in the first of Arabella's steamed frames. Let's, uh, let's take this one out too. I can use this one now. The plan was to take a few good ones down to start working on as the next planks while also marking the better ones, which will be used for the topside planks later. We needed to get a sense of how many of these were actually going to work out as planking material. Right. All is definitely here. I'm gonna go on the side of marking too many right now, and then yeah, I always I mean, go back again and do a second call once we have an idea of how many. How many are actually like pretty good? Pretty good. Yeah. So we picked the same one. Yeah. They're so tight up there, they didn't even drop. Good job. Four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 here. That's not bad. And you said there was, you thought there were even more on the other side? Yeah. Yeah, I think so too from remembering stacking them. I think there's some really glory ones on the other side. We picked some planking stock here for the first cedar planks on Arabella. And these planks have a halfway decent amount of knots in them. 
So with the Atlantic white cedar that we have, we're just not going to find enough perfectly clear cedar to plank a boat like Arabella without absolutely spending an arm and a leg. But the great thing with Atlantic white cedar is the knots really aren't that big of a deal. So like we've talked about before, as long as they're solid live knots and the size of a quarter or smaller, you can pretty much ignore them as long as they're not on the very edge of a plank. And the dead knots are easy enough to plug. And when we went through the cedar rack, we spray painted and marked all of the nicer stock. And what we want to do is put the really nice, almost perfectly clear cedar that we do have up near the shear and above the waterline. And the reason for that is one, aesthetics, um, so that you don't see the knots bleeding through the paint or anything like that. But even more than that is that the planks below the waterline are going to get wet. And for the most part, since Arabella is not going to get hauled every year, are going to stay wet. So they're going to swell up nice and tight and they're going to stay put. And they're not going to go through a lot of shrinking swelling cycles. While above the waterline is going to have a much rougher life. And that's going to get wet. It's going to get dry. It's going to shrink a bit. It's going to swell a bit. And those knots are just a little bit less stable. And then the plugs that we put in might be a little bit less stable. So it's better to have those down below the waterline where they're going to come up to a really tight fit with a really high moisture content and stay that way. Um, so these lower planks, they have a little bit of knots in them, um, but we'll fix them. A lot of them are nothing to really worry about. And they'll be down below the waterline where, like I said, they should swell up and not cause any problems. On the port side, we lined off the bat in parallel to the shear. And in anticipation of what we know a bunch of you are going to say is why don't we line off with the water line? And that way, when you put the planks that are on the boat, they are parallel to the water line and oh, how pretty that would look. And that is a possibility, um, but it brings up a couple issues. So on the starboard side here, we sprung a batten that follows more or less the water line and we'll show you what that would look like. So the batten's fastened here at the water line. And if we come forward, the water line's gonna start to drop in relation to this batten. So we're gonna hit here, which is pretty close. And then we're gonna to come to here, to here. And we're gonna keep dropping and keep dropping. So down here, we're gonna have this much space that we need to fill. And if we go back to a midship, we're going to have this much space to fill. And that's going to be the opposite on the top sides. So on the top sides at midship, we're going to have this very narrow gap. And on the stem and the stern, we're going to have this great big huge gap. So we're going to have to spile and cut planks that make these huge arcs to be able to get them to go on the hull in this shape. And they're also going to have to have an incredible amount of taper between the stem, midship, and stern to be able to fill these two gaps for the sole purpose of having the planks run parallel to the water line, more or less at the water line. So on our haul, by lining off from the shear down like we've had, um, instead of having the planks run parallel to the water line, what's gonna end up happening is you're gonna see the planks on the stem and they're gonna dip down below the water line a little bit and they're gonna show up on the stern again, uh, which for us is completely fine. I think she's gonna look good. And I think it's just gonna be having those planks be nice and even is gonna be the more important thing. Uh, and lining it off the way we are is also, I think, going to be the easiest way to plank her. And at the end of the day, that's kind of the, uh, the biggest consideration in our minds. We woke up the next morning and got started on preparing the planking stock. But before we could start shaping them, we needed to finish lining off. Thad Danielson was coming back later in the morning to help us out with that. And when he showed up, we set the cedar aside to get it worked out. You want to start first with your shear for, with your shear strike and just run that. Have a batten under that or right, at that's the gonna, top of, yeah. of that line. So you think we should forego this batten and just I think you should line off the hull from our broad strike to the shear and just make them I equally think you should. tapered the whole way. Right. Okay. So that the, the difference between the middle and the ends gets less or stays the same kind of instead of getting bigger getting more extreme gotcha right now that batten up there is the top of the shear right the top of that batten is the top, top of the shear yep so if we make the bottom of this batten the bottom of the shear right then right. the shear is guarded right sacred territory right what do you think, like a 14-inch wide shear strike, something like that? <laughs> <laughs>
I don't know. I think five or six, maybe. Five or six. Do you want to jump upstairs? You can hold it to that line. Careful, Russ. Don't hurt yourself. <laughs> With the bottom of the shear marked with a new batten, the next step was to measure the distance from here to the top of the second broad strake. We took this measurement at station six, which is more or less at the center of the boat and the longest distance to the shear. Six foot four and a half inches. Just do that for every station before and after to figure out how many planks that's gonna be. It's how many planks and how you want them spaced. It might be five inches for the first four or five, and then then maybe you'd go down to four inches. As we go through the turn? Right. Because I think we have the stock to very easily put in four or five, six inch planks, whatever, right. and they're thick enough to do the backing out. I mean, if we put a six inch plank on here, it's only a quarter inch of backing out, and right. it's only just a little bit down there. Right, right. Um, Four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight planks. And once we were decided on the width of all the planks at station six, we got out a sheet of plywood and Thad started drawing up his version of what we have been calling a diminishing board. He starts by transferring the location of all the planks at station 6 to one axis. Then, lines are drawn from each of these marks to a single vanishing point far down the board. Next, the distance at each station going forward is matched and drawn across these. And with just these lines, we are able to get the measurements to start cutting out the next planks. Six foot one and five eighths. And if this makes no sense at all, just hold tight. We'll be running through all this again in just a second. He's pretty thin though, huh? With the tips. Yeah, but it's not as thin as it looks, you know. That's an inch and a half, so there'd be three inches there. Mm-hmm. Think three inches is Four enough. inches in the middle and three inches in the towards the end. We were debating the three inches yesterday. And they finish an inch and a quarter. Mm -hmm. It's okay. So then, if we wanted them to, if we found out that they are going to be too narrow at the very tip, then it would be to go through and redo these and make these like four and a half and five and a half or six inches or whatever, so that the ends get proportionally bigger. Yes. Like you dump, yeah. a, dump a plank out of there or whatever, right. basically. We needed a bit to process all of this. So after yeah. finishing up the cedar planks we had started working on that morning, we called it a day. We really wanted to make sure that we were 100% on the plan. This decision on how to line off has major impacts on how Arabella will look. So we don't want to make it lightly. All right, so let's try to clear up this voodoo magic that Thad taught us yesterday, which is the diminishing board. So basically what we're trying to figure out here is how to um, make evenly tapering planks from the midsection of the boat to the bow and the stern, uh, which will fill in the space that we have left evenly. 
Basically, what we start with is you have to figure out the distances from the planks all the way up to the shear straight. So all those distances are marked over here and we take our widest point, which for us is um, station six. And that distance is um, going to be marked on this line right here, on this axis. Um, once we have figured out all the distances, we want to go back to station six and try to figure out what size planks we want at that uh, station. What is going to fit the best? What is going to be able to take the backing out the best? Um, basically, whether we're going to need to have them wide or less wide so that they can accommodate that shape in the boat. Once we have those, we figure out what size planks we have all the way up from the bottom or from the top down. Um, and we're gonna mark those out on this axis over here. The thing is, is that if we were to mark them at the actual size, this board would be as long as the distance from the planks to the shear. So what we do here is we're going to have those just so that we can have um, the same ratio, but it's gonna be a much smaller scale. So here I've started with five inch planks. So as you can see here, they look like two and a halfs. Um, and then through the turn of the bilge, they ended up being four inch planks. So that's what these little guys are over here, these two inchers. We go back to some fives and then we finish off with a six up at the top. Now, once we have this line marked here, um, what we need to do is diminish everything. So basically what we're doing is we're running all of these points on this side out to a distant point over here and they're all running to the same point, just as if you were doing perspective drawing. Um, and that, once we figure out where the rest of the distances are at each station, will give us a diminish for all of the planks. And now you can start drawing in for your next stations. So again, the distances that we had marked over here for each station, we're gonna have those so that we can put that on our board. And you are going to basically, so for example, for station five, which is going to be the next one, I put my rule on nice and square and I slid it over until our measurement was supposed to be 38 and 1 16th until that hit that very top line, which would be the shear. So we hit that, we drew our line and we did the same thing for every other station here. So you can see I have station one, station two, station three, and then they start getting closer together. So we have 11, 10, four, nine, eight, just depends on where those distances hit. And now at every point down here, we'll tell you exactly what that plank is going to be at that station. So if we look on the edge here, let's take, for example, a five inch plank, or let's do one I already measured. We have a four inch plank over here. And now if we measure all of these distances, that'll tell us what the plank should be at those stations. So at its narrowest over at station one, it's gonna end up being um, so this measurement is one and five eighths. So if we double that, that ends up being three and a quarter. Um, and basically we're going to draw all those out on the planks that we have afterwards. And that'll get us to uh, cut out the curve to get that diminish um, to fit onto the boat properly. And there's nothing more to it. So basically we're gonna do this um, for a couple of planks. So we're gonna start with the first couple, which are gonna be sixers. We're gonna put those on the boat. And then since the planks are gonna hit a little bit funny, no matter what you do, the wood's gonna move differently. Um, we're gonna do one of these a uh, couple of times. So we started out for doing that uh, right here for what we have. And then we'll do it for the rest of the planks um, again to figure out the distance that we'll have left once we have those planks on. And basically just keep doing that until you fill up that space. So when we put on the uh, garboard and the first and second broad strake on Arabella here, we had Thad come out and he helped us kind of do some figuring on that. So we did a little bit of spiling for the garboard so that we got kind of a straight line that we could then follow with the first and second broad strakes. And we put those on the first and second broad strakes equal width. One, because we were going through the tight turn of the bilge, um, so we couldn't really put on wide planks anyways, so trying to put taper in them wouldn't be too beneficial. Uh, and two is the oak is just, it's heavy, it's stiff, it's tough to work with. Um, and we had enough room between the top of the broad strake and the rest of the hull that once we get done with the oak, um, we can make up any sort of issues or discrepancies between the second broad strake and the shear. Um, and that's when we lined off with that. Initially, we kind of realized that we didn't quite need to line off yet. And our best bet was to just get the garboard and the broad strakes on and then do a more thorough lining off job for the rest of the hull. And that is what we are gonna dive into today.
we got a couple of volunteers helping us out right now too. So we've got Jordan here and Ross. Uh, so Alex and Jordan are gonna work on the lining off and figuring out all the planks for Arabella and their shapes and all of that. And Ross and I are gonna go dive into the cedar and go start getting the planks scarfed up. So as soon as those guys are done with the lining off, we'll have the planks ready for them to start hanging. Jordan is visiting after having just spent a month with Leo's Tally Ho in Washington State. My name's Jordan. I'm from England, been so it's taken three months out of my normal life to go and help strangers from the internet build boats. So next natural progression was to come over and here and help Steve and Alex with Arabella. Yeah. Uh, and then going on from here to another so, one. And it's 75, and about two gives us a 37 and a half. Downstairs, Steve and Ross were going through some of the cedar stock for the bottom side planks, and they were coming to the realization that we don't actually have enough good material to plank the whole boat. So we made a quick decision to do a few more strakes in oak, and Ross and Steve started making their way through the stack. Well folks, there's the plan, and then there's what happens. Uh, so we were planning to switch over to the cedar and before we started hanging cedar plaques we went and took an inventory of the cedar that we have in the rack. and kind of just went through and spray painted the ones that we thought would make decent planking stock. And we took a few that were kind of so-so and ran them through the thickness planer to see what the knots and stuff would look like. And what we've determined is we're not quite sure that we're going to have enough cedar to plank all of the hull of Arabella. So that leaves us with a couple options. We could go buy cedar, which we're kind of loath to do. Um, or we could hang a few more oak planks. And although you're really Jones into work with some nice light cedar, we have lots of white oak. And if we run out of white oak, we can just go out in the woods and get more white oak. Um, so I think we're gonna hang three more strakes on either side of white oak, and that'll take us just shy of the water line. And that should make the cedar that we have go a lot farther. Uh, and hopefully we'll have enough cedar to do the rest of the haul after that. So we pulled out some oak planks. We're gonna have to run them down to the sawmill. Uh, but so we can keep rolling, we're just going to resaw one of those and hopefully get a plank scarfed up today so we can start hanging it tomorrow. And tomorrow we can take the wagon and the tractor down to the sawmill and get a pile of oak boards resawn and scarf up a bunch of planks out of those in the next couple days. Mm -hmm. 